602. Um, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? All right. Um, I don't think we need to assign times tonight. We'll just try and keep things going quickly. Um, is there any public comment at this time? Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. To approve the minutes of Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. Entertain a motion. I would make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. All right. Um, any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved the minutes of Tuesday, October 19th. Uh, do we have any board comments? Okay, that brings us to the superintendent report to the board. Uh, good evening. It's good seeing all of you. And I think we lost Peggy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the um, although I do get a little joyful when I hear Peggy in the milking parlor, <laughs> so it brings me back to my childhood. So, um, you know, uh, to add to my report, I'm really pleased to let folks know that uh, we actually started um, PCR testing. Um, at some of my mem our member schools um, to get students out of quarantine and it's gone thus far exceptionally well which is great and uh, we expect to have our an antigen test to do tests to stay um, for next week and so we're actually a little ahead of uh, the timeline that I had last put out and the last time the information I had yesterday was that we already had uh, 160 folks sign up um, in consent so that was good news and so um, you know I think that uh, the timing of that us being on the roll that out with as much positivity as we're seeing in the community is significant um, I'll just add I'm sure you've heard my messages uh, I'm really trying to message to folks especially as we're coming up on the holidays that you know, we were really successful, I think, uh, keeping our schools open for in-person learning uh, because uh, the community was really um, following mitigation efforts. And uh, I will say, uh, probably knock on wood somewhere for your district, things have sort of slowed down a little bit with positivity, uh, but the, my schools on the 110 corridor last week was pretty busy. Um, and so it's definitely in, the COVID is definitely pretty present in uh, Bethel, Royalton, Tumbers, and Chelsea. I can tell you based on positivity rates of students coming in the building, positive. Um, and so I will say, though, we're still seeing that our mitigation efforts within the building are working quite well, and we're not seeing any type of significant sp spread in our buildings. Uh, and so that's good news. Um, you know, we still, I would say that it's a, uh, the Department of Health is still really delayed in getting us information. Uh, and what I mean by that is that positivity that we've had, uh, where students have uh, tested positive, and sometimes a week before we hear that. And that's really frustrating. Um, and so I've shared that frustration with folks, and I know every system's overwhelmed, but I'm really proud of the fact that I, you know, over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday, our team of, of teachers came together in contact trace both Saturday and Sunday uh, for member schools of the SU. So just a huge shout out to everything that folks are doing. I hope that they, they know when I say thank you, I, I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Um, and then the only other thing that I, would, I just wanted to highlight is that We've um, engaged into what I think are some pretty like successful collaborative conversations um, with the Central Vermont Supervisory Union. And what we are going to be proposing to the full board as a concept um, next Monday 
is the idea of our alternative programming, um, supporting some students at CVSU, specifically at the middle school level, that may, may need some more intensive social emotional supports. Our middle school program's doing quite well. Um, and we really love the team that we've built. So it's an area of strength, we believe, for us. Um, and they have a really good program right now for middle and high school level students um, that are on the spectrum and uh, or who have more global cognitive delays. Um, and so the concept being is that we would, we'd have some spots available and they would have some spots available for us um, so that we could do some training as students. And, um, and the concept was also going to be that they were going to support some of the transportation costs. And so I'll have more of those details to share with the full board on Monday. Um, and it looks like we would be able to, what we believe is take on at a max of five additional students um, by adding really just another um, support staff person is what we're thinking. And so based on our current numbers in our SU. So the MOU would always indicate that the priority would be our organization but that if we had availability that we could trade out spots. And what we are finding in general is that uh, alternative programs um, in the state seem to be overflowing currently at the moment um, when we're looking to support our students that have the most intensive need and uh, students are just being waitlisted. So I think the more we can be collaborative regionally, the better. And this is actually a model <laughs> that was in place years ago um, a regional model that used to support students um, in the Air Street School, actually, where uh, Don McMahon first got his admin job as a principal, was to support students regionally who had, need, had intensive needs. And uh, at one point, those things were uh, taken down with the focus on inclusion, which, you know, I think our model of trying to do in have these programs within our buildings to still inc have inclusion but to have some specialty models across SUs that do certain things well or better um, may serve us well in the long run. So just know that I'm continuing to have those types of conversations to look at how do we provide better programming for kids, but do it at a, at a cost that's reasonable. And, and just to give the board a sense right now, the tuition for an out-of-district placement at East Valley Academy is at $106,000 per pupil right now. Um, and so that's a significant increase in cost that's gone up uh, from 30000 two years ago to $106,000. Um, and so it really behooves us, I think, to really look at how can we best support our students here internally. And, and funding around special ed is changing. And so what I mean by that is we're moving to a block grant, which we're not going to see a lot of revenue go down, but I do believe over the next few years there's a concept of fading out extraordinary costs, which means excessive costs over 60000 per pupil. Um, right now we're reimbursed 90% on that. The, it sounds like to me that some of that funding mechanism may change. So what I mean is we wouldn't get 90% of every dollar we spend over sixty. I think that that's going to change in the future, so I think it behooves us to start building more and more programming now that's specialized. Um, and so that's the that's just I wanted to share that, and I will share more about it with Annette Rhodes on Monday. Um, and I got to say, if you didn't watch the video that you one of your students created with faculty and staff here and students at White River Valley Middle School, please do. It's a really huge celebration of learning, and uh, I'll take any questions, folks. Have. Um, your section about the memorandum of understanding with CDSU talks about the uh, space in Chelsea Elementary School. What are you guys thinking of using that for? Well, we thought about using it for one of the programs. We haven't really decided which one yet. Um, and part of why we're thinking about that space is that it's going to be vacant next year. And so I brought up the concept of having some specialized programming in that school. Um, and the first branch unified district board is open to that concept, uh, which is good news. And geographically, it's close to CVSU, Orange, Washington, Williamstown are all really within 
uh, Lou, less than a 20 minute drive uh, via bus. So we're, we were thinking about how could we leverage that. And there, the concept there too would be cost savings. They were willing to pay for some heat and electricity uh, if, they, if we were going to utilize that. But the general concept for the <coughs> whopping slots is that we wouldn't exchange any tuition money. Exactly. Yep. That we wouldn't exchange tuition money. Okay. All right. If there's no other questions for Jamie, we'll move on to the principal's report. Good evening. Uh, I could start here or um, and just tell you that we're still working on our, our concept of restorative practice in solving problems in the school and we're training up the entire faculty and staff and not just the traditional way of training the faculty. So this will be over the year and a couple years to create the model of restoring a problem when it happens and repairing harm when it's done. That's one part of this, uh, our goal one. I know that Andrea and Reed both have something in there too. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that we had a handle the care training and de escalation training for our full staff, um, mm. which I think is key that we were able to offer that to everybody. And that's something I don't remember ever doing before. Um, so that's going to help with the basis of understanding about how to help in a maybe stressful situation. And then there was a follow up training, more acute training for like first responders to maybe come in when the de-escalation techniques aren't working. So that was exciting and good. Uh, also just, I think what's noted in there too, is our um, school-based clinicians, which is, is so wonderful to have here from Claire Martin, are hopping. And so, so is our SAP. So they can see about 25 to 30 kids each, and they are seeing about 25 to 30 kids each. Yeah. So it's wonderful to have them here as a resource and just another layer for, for our families and kids. I feel like even yesterday I just got a, an email from a state trooper who was saying, do you have this service for your kids? And yes, we do. <laughs> so it felt good yeah. that it's getting out in the community. Sounds great. Yeah. yeah. And at the high school, two of our big initiatives are, despite some staffing challenges, uh, our personalized learning classroom is up and off the ground and uh, now has a woodworking component. Uh, for the next two quarters and the culinary component, so a lot of hands-on work-based uh, learning in the afternoons for, for our students. And uh, our lead them up social emotional program, we're doing an advisory every week, is off to a good start. Kids met this Monday to look over students who've been nominated for special recognition and celebration next month. Um, and they've really taken it seriously and taken it to heart. Um, and we're looking forward to our, our first school wide assembly in uh, well, just a little over 10 days. Uh, to recognize students, and we'll we'll be giving them uh, Wildcat T-shirts and other cool gifts for their positive contributions to our community. So, if we go into uh, our second goal, that with proficiency-based learning and uh, specifically literacy, we have K-12 introduced a writing assessment that we're implementing as we speak. I sat in the other day in a middle school class where they were doing it, and it's at different levels, but we're gonna be able to have writing assessments across grades and an agreement. And January 14th, when we have our early release day, staff and faculty, faculty are gonna work on that and try to calibrate how we measure that, assess that. And it, it's pretty exciting. And I think what I would just add to that is that's connected to the summer work that we had our teachers do this past Thank summer. Um, and that that's not actually an SU initiative, but that was really teacher driven from RUD teachers. So it's a cold write. They're writing about zoos, which is funny for kids in Vermont. <laughs> but um, so there's um, some reading that has happened for the kids, depending on their age, they might be read too, or um, be reading some texts. And then they're uh, responding about their thoughts on zoos. So. It'd be great to like really sit down as a whole staff and look at proficiencies and see the scope, vertical scope from K all the way up to 12 with that writing. Yeah, that's awesome. But in addition, we're doing all the other things that we've been talking about and uh, continuing with our math, things like that. Yeah. That's just a section. 
uh, and I think this next section I would say we just wrapped up parent-teacher conferences, which were super well attended. We're just collecting the data on how many parents came in, but I feel like offering virtual and in-person, uh, we've had a lot more people be able to access um, conferences, so that felt nice. Um, and I just think, again, kudos to teachers, because I know that parent conference break is hard, and it's late nights, and they did a great job. Um, at the same time in Royalton, uh, Galen, was, I really give her all the credit, it was the South Royalton PTO, but it was Galen Hubert did a snow clothing drive for families. So when they came in for conferences, if they came in, they could pick up snow gear, so kind of a swap. So that was, I thought, I thought that was wonderful. I don't know, I think it's a tradition and I think that's something that should stay forever. Um, and then the week before that, we had our first book fair in two years and made a lot of money, I think, just because people haven't gone to the book fair for two years. So it was nice to have families in for that. And, uh, yeah. And as Superintendent pointed out, there was the uh, national conference presentation that a student and teacher did. And I got to sit on, on that. But uh, we also are meeting on a regular basis with our communications coordinator. And we're doing more social uh, media engagement. And I think Reed could talk about the night at Chelsea School and that the reach, reaching out to families. And um, I know Shannon's on the task force. We're planning on December 2nd at, for the middle school level of it, going to Sharon uh, Elementary and bringing a few teachers and students and maybe parents and uh, talking to families there about what their options are here at the middle school for, um, for their students. Yeah, since the principal's report was done last week, we actually have another student shadowing with us. Uh, this okay. week, actually tomorrow, maybe looking to to uh, come from a homeschool environment back into the back into the fold. We're hopeful about that. Uh, and I want to make a plug for Friday's uh, in-building, in-person production of Dracula on Friday and Saturday night at 7 p.m. Uh, it's not our return to live productions because we, we did two of those last year. They just have to be outside. But it'll be nice to be able to open and close the curtain and have kids work in the lights, work in the sound system, and have that stage experience. So we're really, really excited about that. I think the last thing that's super notable is we just um, started vaccinating vaccinations for our elementary. Um, and that was, you could kind of like feel the excitement among the elementary students. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of, kind of hard to be like, it's kind of private, you don't have to talk about it, but they were like really excited. And I'm sure it's just a lot of reflection on pe people's and families' desire for this to have happened now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think that's it, unless there's yeah. more. And we're happy to take questions. And if you haven't checked out the newsletters, click on the links and check them out. So I have a question, um, and I'm one of those parents who had a very excited eight-year-old flopping around last night that he had gotten his shot, which never happens, right? So that's awesome. <laughs> um, so mine actually are for um, a couple of things that we've talked about um, for the middle school. And so I'm wondering if in the middle school there's going to be any theater this year, and also if the D.C. trip is going to happen. Right now, there's no plan about around theater. We do have a club, a um, theater club, and that happens mm -hmm. on Friday afternoons. But I'm totally open to that happening. But we, so more to come on that, I guess. We can float that idea. DC is in works. It's in the plan. We okay. we're trying to figure out the best way to do that, the safest way to do that, and how to make sure we have everything in order. But that's underway. We're excited about it. Yellowstone is also underway for planning. And there's been so much interest in the Yellowstone trip that we're looking at the possibility of two groups or three groups over the whole summer. It's a great problem. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I, I'd like to follow up on the theater thing, but maybe we could do that outside of the meeting. And sure. I'm happy to talk about that. Other? Commentary. You can also tell us nice things about ourselves. Just kidding. <laughs> um, is the reading assessment that you guys are doing is that like tied into that kind of proficiencies and stuff? Like the that writing assessment. Yeah. Writing. Yep. Writing. So we're looking at the proficiencies um, 
and they're uh, assessing each one on the rubric, and then that's kind of like where we're going to come together and talk about like what's working, what's not working. Yeah. And right, so this uh, the reading, what they read is informational text. So we have that built in right away, right? The reading right. piece. But it's considered a cold, right? Because there's no instruction about how to do it. It's just seeing where kids are at. Right. Okay. That's good. It's called a cold, right? Called cold, right? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's pretty significant to get your whole staff participating. It's crazy oh, good. It's, it's really good. It's exciting. And built by teachers, the point yeah, Andrew made. And I'm all about internal competition, so <laughs> you're certain that I'll be sharing it with other districts. We could have the board could get take a shot at it. That's true. I'm doing the writing assignment? Yeah. <laughs> that may be a celebration of learning coming up. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions for the principals? All right, Tara. Good evening, everyone. So you have my report. It overviews the deadlines that we have for the month of November. So if there's any questions there. Otherwise, Ray, if you could put up the FY22 first quarter projections. Uh, first quarter, we focused on salary and benefits. So about halfway down the page is the potential areas of savings. So the salary savings is your budget versus the contracts that were issued. Right now we have a savings of $153,632. And then the health insurance is your budget versus currently enrolled. And our open enrollment season is in January. So depending if staff changes their health plans, there could be an adjustment for this line. But currently it's $72,539 in savings. Your total projected savings of $226,171. And then Ray, if you can move to the second page, please. So this is the revenue side. Current tuition projections, we are down $35,600. Pre-K, we are up $178. Interest income, as the months go on, that will change. But right now, we received $5,914. I don't have any miscellaneous revenue. I don't have any rentals and no student activities at this point. So that is your local revenue. Mm -hmm. And down below, we are projecting the budgeted amount for property taxes, tech ed funding, and transportation aid. We'll know more on the transportation aid later in the year when that gets released from the AOE. And then again, down below, the vocational transportation reimbursement. Um, we just submitted our first semester for vocational transportation. So I'll have a better projection after that comes back in from the AOE once they assign their reimbursement rates. Driver's Ed, we haven't received anything in from the state yet, but I do project to get what we budgeted for there. And then adult learning, that still is in your budget, but I haven't seen any revenue there, so I don't have any projection for that. So with the difference on the expenditure savings and the revenue shortfall, we have a projected sorry, surplus of $161,664 at the end of first quarter. And then down below, summary of financial operations, I've updated that for the FY19 audited, the FY20 audited, and then the FY21 non-audited financial the general fund. And then down below that are your reserve fund balances as of June 30, 2020. And when I have the final audit, that will obviously be updated for June 30, 2021. Any questions on that? Um, the general fund balance, sir, uh, not audited one is- I can't hear you, Andrew. Sorry, sorry. Um, in the summary of financial op operations section, those lines are basically the snapshot at that time. So it's not like adding those together to get. That was the general fund balance at the end of that fiscal year. Right. Okay. Just want to make sure. 
And then um, the salary savings, that's basically just because we haven't been able to fill some positions, not because of any FDA. It could be that, and it also could be um, hire, new hires that, re that replaced retirees. Right. Okay. The combination. If I heard your question right, it's hard to hear you. Yep, sorry. Um, my other question was, uh, if if we turned in the fall census and tuition student census, do we have that data, or could we get that data so that we can compare it to previous years and stuff? I heard, did the fall census get submitted? And I didn't hear the rest. <clears throat> Could you provide us with what we submitted? Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't, <clears throat> I didn't come prepared to answer that off the top of my no, head. No, that's fine. Right. So those, uh, the lists of students have gone to the principals um, the last couple of weeks. And the deadline was last Friday, but uh, not for Rudd, but for some of the other schools, sending schools in the SU, there's still some ADM trickling in. So overall, uh, the ADM should be down a bit from uh, 1920, which was kind of a high level mark recently. And uh, I can certainly send you numbers okay. tomorrow. Um, and do you guys have, I mean, it's probably way too early, but you know, there was the ADM kind of adjustment for last year, but we have no idea what they're going to do this year as well. The whole harmless, that I don't know about. No, and of course, the big thing right now in the books, too, is the waiting study, right? And so we expect some type of recommendation. We're supposed to get figures, we were supposed to get them on the 10th about what the waiting study would have done to our equalized pupils at least their projections, that got delayed. So we'll, you know, our equalized pupils, they'll calculate them the same for this year, but moving forward, uh, they'll be weighted differently. And uh, so stay tuned to that in general. I think based on, you know, some of the, the indicators that they're taking into account for that, I think we're gonna be okay in most of our districts, but I'm curious to see what those projections look like. And as far as tuitions, we can definitely give you an update on what our projections are versus what we're looking at too. But based on your revenue, it seems like it's pretty close, which is good news. And I know we had two more students just start at the middle school this week. Okay. Any other questions for Tara? Okay, we'll go to the task force reports. Uh, okay. So you guys for pre so, staff sort of falling We didn't really write a report. <laughs> no, just oral updates. Yeah, that. so uh, we yeah, are cool. at the place of, we sent out the preschool survey. Um, our last meeting we get got together and kind of really tweaked the survey. Pushed it out via Facebook. Seems people like Shannon have done a good job pushing it out even further. Um, and we have some good information coming in. Um, so I think our next meeting is tomorrow to kind of look at the surveys and what we got back and, and figure out next steps based on that. What am I missing? Is that, that's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's where we're at. Owen, you want to? Owen sure. and Shannon, you want to update the? Sure. We've been meeting. I think it's every other Monday, and we are talking about this is the task force to for student recruitment and from that we have come up with a plan to go to uh, Sharon Elementary and we've already secured that date and the principal is going to join us and we are we're working now with um, one of our principal interns Mindy Beth Pike is going to help with that because she has a student parent engagement piece of her program that she would like to use there oh, great. yeah and we're going to highlight the Yellowstone trip and some other trips, but we're also going to point out things like our academic programming and our pod programming. We're going to use that same model, learn from that, and then redo it at the RSUD uh, campuses. 
That's where we're at now. And we are going to do a plan, do, study, act cycle of improvement. So we know that we'll do really well, but we know that we will also be able to improve that by looking back on it. And Good. I'll say one of the shout outs, one of the things that I, I, I think has been powerful, and, and Shannon, feel free to jump, chime in too, or Owen, is that we have two member district principals on True. that task force that are supporting this work, and I think that that's powerful. They've given us some good insight yeah. of things we're not seeing. So Michael Livingston is one of them, and he has experience with, with recruiting students in his career, so he's been very helpful with that. And I think Principal Haley's done a really good oh job my God. Of, so helpful. of setting us up for some so success. Helpful. The, the hard example on that is uh, Principal Haley actually s sent an email to all the sixth grade parents telling them that we're our plan and that we're going to be inviting them. We didn't have a date set. And now this week, I'm calling each family in the evening and harassing them, just kidding, and inviting them to this evening. And we're going to have a pizza party. And it, it'll be soft, but it'll also be, um, we want to be there to let, answer questions and let people know what we offer here. Yeah. So I'm really excited about some of the things that we're doing this fall in recruiting right now. And then I'm probably most excited about this spring, though, and um, going out and talking to some folks, um, getting some feedback and creating um, a, a communications sort of plan around how recruiting can happen um, and marketing in the future. And then also, um, you know, using our um, our resources on the websites and things to really um, to the best of our ability and to put some great content on there um, that I think is already being created. It's just making it super accessible. And, and um, so I, I'm really excited about that piece too, um, where we go from here. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, we don't have the student representatives here today, um, so we'll move on to action items. The first being the C30 anti-racism policy. Yes, yeah, so the policy's on its sixth draft now. Did okay. I, I think I saw a sixth well, draft come out, fifth draft, draft, okay, which was passed by the full board. And you are warned to adopt tonight. Right. Um, so. That feels exciting to me. Um, I feel like we haven't heard a lot of opposition in our communities, or I certainly haven't. Um, so I'm excited that we're able to move that forward. Well, uh, do we have a, a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the draft five policy, uh, anti racism policy as written. I'll second. Okay. Um, do we have any discussion on the anti racism policy? F27 bids, quotations, and procurement policy. Is everybody aware of what the changes were with this? Basically just changing the limit to match what the state is recommending now. Um, I would entertain a motion. I, I would make a motion. 
motion to pass that policy. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, um, let's go through the vote again. Uh, Chris? Aye. Shanna? Shanna, do you have a vote? Sorry, if you ask for me, mine's an aye. Maggie? Aye. 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 All right, um, on to the discussion items. Draft two of the 22-23 red budget. Universal instruction. Ray, do you have that to put up on the screen? Coming in a second. In your packets too, just so folks know. So we did make at the top, and you'll see highlighted there in yellow. We made some adjustments to that line item in the second draft because there were some changes made to was who was providing services there. So there's a small adjustment, and then we'll move down to the second section, the general education. So for pre-K, that remains at 2.0 FTE. Regular education elementary is at 16 FTE. And part of that FTE was moved up to the top under intervention. For middle school, high school, this line item covers a 1.5 FTE for health. EC in ECO and outdoor ed of 1.3 FTE, which is an overall increase of 0.5 FTE. The library remains the same at 2.0 FTE, music at 3.0, PE is 3.1, art 2.5, foreign language 2.0, and then down at the English line, it's 5.4, which is an increase of 0.4. Family and Consumer Science remains at 0.5. Tech Ed remains at 1.0. And then under math, we have a 5.0 FTE and 0.5 FTE was also moved above to intervention. And on the science line, it's the same FTE in the current budget. We just had an adjustment for um, benefits. In social studies, we had a reduction of 1.0 FTE. Driver's Ed remains the same at 0.4. Work-based learning remains the same at 0.8. And then the community school coordinator, as part of the Act 67 Community Schools Grant, we're required to do a match on that funding. So that is adding in the 0.5 requirement for that. So overall, the general education budget is up $66,373, which is a 1.53% increase. So I'll just jump in and principals can too. I mean, so your budget just in salary and benefits is going to be up close to about 168000 which is not bad when you think about increases in health insurance. And uh, we are budgeting accordingly. Um, due to the fact that we're in negotiations right now. And so I want you to know we're, we're budgeting and planning for that as well. Um, in this, um, you know, we take into account that uh, some of the hires have been good, right? And that's part of why you're projecting a surplus this year, um, which is keeping this a little lower than we might see typically. Um, and we're trying to leverage, of course, as, as many title funds as we can for you guys. And you'll see that up above around grant funding remaining the same on currently funded positions. Um, what I would say to you is, is that one of the things we're gonna do between now and December is to just sit down again and go through and make certain everybody's coded at the appropriate places. You can see we continue to adjust that based on where folks are actually assigned this year. And so we'll, these numbers may change a little bit, not your FTEs, but just it could change a little bit from general ed to student support. Uh, where intervention is. Um, and then what I would say to you too is if you look, one of the things I think that we're really excited about is that 
This budget does support two pathways, full-time pathways coordinators and um, still community-based learning um, as we look to try to expand uh, our pathways programming across both campuses. And um, I would say to you, we've had some real successes this year where some students have been able to, um, because we've been down a pathways coordinator, actually our high school students have worked with Tony Snow, who's our middle school pathways coordinator, and Tony's been able to work with them to build plans so that they could demonstrate proficiency and then be awarded appropriate credit. And so I think that that's exciting. Um, and I would say that, you know, we had a student in the supervisory union office just this evening at 4.30 working on a pathway with Alicia Rominger, who does some contracting service for us for some students who, um, you know, may need a real alternative looking pathway um, toward graduation. And so um, she's got a lot of experience in that role. And so I want folks to know that there are starting to be some real examples, I think, of us um, actually serving students. And it looks uh, very untraditional and looks really personalized. And I think that that's really good news. I think it's good news when we think about dropout prevention. I think it's good news for students who, you know, may be taking uh, college courses uh, virtual courses and um, you know and or just studying out in the community and being able to demonstrate P credit for example that's one of the pathways that happens so um, you know I would say this budget is as far as at least salary and benefits and the principal can correct me if I'm wrong I feel 90% there just so you guys know I feel like in December you're gonna get everything uh, which will be all the budget lines, including salary and benefits. And what I've said to the principals at this point, because you haven't given us really a direction yet around where you're hoping to come in at, we're, we're sort of looking around that 3% target um, to not make certain that we're not going over, is what I'm saying. So we're looking at how can we build the program when we want without getting over a 3% area, uh, unless you guys you know tell us differently. Last year we actually cut the budget, um, and so I don't think we're in a place where we're going to be able to do that again, um, and not hurt programming. So that's that's sort of where we're at at the moment that we're looking at. Did I miss anything? That's good. That's good. Sounds good. So you're looking to come in right around the three percent increase. That's what we're looking at right now. I mean, that's each district's different, and so. For this district, I felt like I said, let's that be our goal. Mm -hmm. And let's try to hit that mark without, we're really trying to continue to expand programming and certainly not hurt programming. Right. Um, and so that's sort of the, the, the compass we're using, I think, to guide our decisions at this point. Um, on the FTE changes for like math and social studies and English, um, what does that look like as far as, you know, were we basically taking partial person from social studies and shifting them to English just because of class demand or like what's the reason? Yeah, I would say that these FTEs line up to how we're currently staffing. And so based on licensure and things, and so based on how we're currently staffed and in, in supporting kids, this is how the FTEs are currently kind of broke down. Okay. Um, and so it's not so much a change, it's just a coding change. It's coding changes, and, but it's also changes in just licensure and how we're utilizing staff. When we think about pathways programming, trying to provide more electives, <laughs> what licensures we hire, um, those things would change. Is that fair? Any other questions on the general ed education budget? All right. Um, Can I just, is that 3% or are you guys, uh, you didn't say anything, so I'm taking that that's good. Yeah, that's is that good. at least yeah. a good, like, we're, uh, so we know we have a goal, right? So when we're talking and we're, thinking outside the box and trying to and present you a budget that we feel like you're going to support, 
to feel good about? Is that an okay place for us to be working from? Yeah, no, I think that that's a good, good thing to do now. I mean, we'll certainly have to see what happens with everything else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, right, exactly. There's a lot to still come in. <laughs> but Equalize no, I think 3% is okay. Half of current inflation is a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. All right, so we'll keep working on this. I mean, you'll get the whole thing in December. Okay. Uh, career change assistance program. Uh... So this is uh, Article 17 of the Master Agreement. Um, Article 17 says that you need to act to either uh, decline offering this or to offer it. Um, I'm going to recommend that you decline it. You did last year as well. And just so folks know what you're declining is, is actually if you were to offer this, teachers could apply. If they've been in your district longer than 15 years, it then results in uh, they would receive 80% of their salary plus um, uh, health insurance for a year uh, for a single plan. And certainly it's not something we've budgeted for, but just when you think about that 3% rate, the fact that we haven't budgeted for it, if a couple people did um, opt into that, that would that be a significant impact to your budget. So that's hence why I'm recommending you go. Okay. Um, do we need to act on this? We do. Yeah. Does anybody have any thoughts? Mm -hmm. um, if there's no other discussion, well, I guess I'd entertain a motion to accept or decline the Career Change Assistance Program. I make a motion that we decline the career assistance change program for this year. Any seconds? I would second that. Okay. Um, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Um, that is declined. Okay, uh, the request for qualifications and energy audit. So uh, we put out the RFQ, which was exciting. We had one person uh, put in uh, to do the work, and that was EI Services who did the presentation. The action tonight is to allow them to do the free audit and to come to us proposals. That's how the RFQ was written. It's not binding past that. They're ready to come in next week, which is exciting. So I just need uh, a motion and an approval to uh, enter into that agreement. And that agreement is for them to provide a free audit. And so you guys know what I've talked to them about is really having a proposal for us um, about doing the work that we absolutely have to do and, and no extras. I, I want a couple proposals is what I'm saying. Yeah. So I said to them, with each district, do what we absolutely have to do and get us the best performance we can and have it you know, be as cost neutral as possible across the performance. Mm -hmm. And then I said, give us an option where you say, well, here's all the things you, we recommend you should do, right? And so I'm actually asking them to do two to three proposals. But one, definitely, we know we have things in each district we have to do. Please make certain that that's part of the proposal. Um, and so that, we hopefully will see that in January. Is they will. Are you providing them with a list of must-haves? Or are they kind of? They're going to they're gonna determine those on their own. They're okay. supposed to, yeah. But Lyle is going to be touring the buildings with them, which I feel good about. Um, and he's kind of got his pulse now. He's been working with your custodians for a while now and uh, the other SU custodians. So I feel like he's got a pretty good sense of what our have-tos, um, specifically with our, our HVAC and human systems. Okay. So uh, I'd entertain our motion to approve the free audit. I'll move it. A second. Okay. Does anybody have any discussion on on this? Okay. All in favor, say aye.
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. No approval for the auto. It's exciting. All right, the snow Who's, plowing bid. Who seconded that? I'm sorry. Okay. So we received one bid for the snow plowing and salting for the winter. It is from Green Mountain, the same contractor that we had last year. We got the approval from the state for the bid waiver as we only had the one response. And his proposal this year is $59,740 which is an increase of $1,000 over what he provided us last year at $58,740. Is, did we budget for any kind of increase? Just out of curiosity. Can you open that up, Andrew? I can let you know. is working on that. Does anybody have a discussion on this item? Seems like something we should approve is going to stop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're pretty happy with uh, the service. Yeah. yeah. Seems good. I don't have to do anything. Combined at both locations, Andrew, we had 119000 in the budget. So this, okay, that, yeah, all right. Um, okay, well, I'd entertain a motion to uh, to award the snow plowing contract to Green Mountain Mowing. I'll move it. All right, all right, second. Okay. Discussion? All, right. all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Snow plowing bid is accepted. Okay, performing arts lab potential project. Any update on that this month? Yeah. Uh, we modified our timeline a little bit because our original request for construction manager bids only produced two construction managers. Um, the construction managers would come in and estimate the costs and, and do a lot of the legwork in setting up what the project would look like, um, which means we, we'd ask to come into the board in December and kind of lay out the costs, uh, but by having pushed back our timeline a little bit, we won't be prepared to do that. Although I'd still like to be able to bring the committee in to provide the rationale behind this project. Uh, and begin to engage the board in the discussion about whether it's something the board is interested in continuing to you know, pursue and, and what, uh, what strings might be attached with that. Um, we've just pushed it back two weeks, but by doing so, we're hoping to get a few more construction managers. Uh, we've been doing walkthroughs around the building uh, with some of those folks and answering a lot of questions for them. Uh, we hope on Monday to review applications uh, and then we're going to be interviewing two, two or three finalists the, uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving. So ho hopefully we'll have some quality candidates to help us figure out what this is going to cost. Uh, and then once we have that, uh, we'll be looking to go out and take that around to some private funders and see what we can raise out there to make this happen. All right. anyway, it's all a little bit vague at this point. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll we'll come to you at the next meeting with with more specifics uh, and uh, set aside a little bit of time to answer questions right. about what we're we're looking to do. Yeah, looking forward to hearing more about it. Um, does anybody have any more questions for Reed? 
All right, then um, Great. we've already taken action on the, um, these two items that are on the possible action items, so we're on to resignations new hires. We did have uh, one resignation. Um, Aaron Green, who was our nighttime custodian, uh, resigned, and so we're in the hunt for a nighttime custodian. Um, and so, right now, we're, we're trying to piecemeal it together. Uh, I gotta say, South Rolton Building still looks incredible. A huge shout out to Lori Agum. I mean, and her staff, they do amazing work. I was in there today touring buildings around, because we were creating a comprehensive PD program on where our custodians may need to strengthen things in their cleaning protocols, and so I've got uh, some folks coming in to help me develop that PD program, and so that's one of the buildings we toured, and they were so complimentary, and they work with schools all over New England. Um, I just gotta say, Lori's incredible. So, but uh, we are looking at maneuvering some subs around to get further coverage at the nighttime uh, location at Royalton. Um, we have a couple sub custodian subs that are supporting schools in the SU, and we may maneuver them and jockey them to ensure that we have full-time coverage there after Thanksgiving. So, and we are hunting. Well, and uh, I'd add, add that uh, starting yesterday, we hired one of our seniors who has been doing uh, custodial work on the weekends um, and was looking for a change in, in his job. And uh, as of yesterday, he came on board four hours a day. So he's going to be taking half of what was Aaron's shift uh, as a 20 hour a week employee. Uh, and uh, really excited. I, I think it's going to be a great opportunity for him and he's going to work out. Awesome. So, yeah, just wanted to update you. It's not really any action you need to take, uh, but I want you to be in the loop. Yeah. We, we did also interview uh, two flexible pathway coordinator candidates yesterday, um, and we'll be talking to Jamie about uh, what that looked like and how they might want to as well. Whether or not either of them would be a good fit for, for what we're looking for. Okay. I would say, uh, just so the board knows, um, it's not, education, this business is transforming, I feel like, in front of our eyes, where folks are jockeying around more in the year than I've ever seen before. Um, and it's not just here, I'm hearing that from other districts as well. And so, I think it is something I started talking to my superintendent colleagues about um, in regards to wrapping our heads around this, because in the past, it's really been folks come and they stay in place. Uh, mostly I'm thinking about our support staff in general, and I'm finding that that's just not the case. Uh, and it's not just here, it's, it's, it seems to be across schools, but also of course across job markets in general is what I'm hearing. And so it's just something for us to, I think as we try to be forward thinking, uh, wrap our heads around how do, we, how do we try to navigate that, that's all. All right, um, do we have any public comments? Um, we don't have any other. Uh, so future agenda items, we'll hear more about the um, performing arts center uh, next month. Um, and more budget stuff next month. Any other future agenda items? The next meeting is Tuesday, December 21st at 6 p.m. at Royalton. Um, we're all done. I can take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. A second. All right, thanks everybody.